Yes, I was just thinking as well, one day for charity, we should do a 24-hour uh, stream of us doing one of these, oh. where 23 hours is, are just both of us checking our phones. <laughs> and we're not even into our phones. Are we it's even like in, the, in the same room at all? No. They're recorded on separate days. They're just two videos put together. It's live. They're like, we're, we're transmitting the video live, but we're not live. And chat is off. It's not even like we're not interacting. Chat is done. There's n absolutely nothing there. I mean, it's open, but you get auto-blocked for, like, interacting <laughs> with it. You don't even have to press enter. You just, like, go onto the... the Banned. Uh, text box. Yeah, Banned. <laughs> Banned, and every time, every time someone's banned, Spoonie's face flashes up. <laughs> We've raised a million dollars that way. <laughs> it's like a GIF, and it's it's animated. And he's wagging his finger as well. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> I, I might put my fist through my uh, computer screen if I saw that. <laughs> Have you checked out Spoonie recently? Absolutely not. Why on earth would I do that? To see what he's up to. Slowly wasting away, I presumably. Um, well, aren't we all? <laughs> but has he made any fun videos about Ultima lately? I thought it was just WrestleMania these days. Nothing but, yeah. There's nothing these days. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe one day I'll, you know, I'll dare to log in to the, you know, his Twitter and see what's going on there. See if he's still wasting away. Didn't he have some like? Uh, progressive disease or something I can't remember I don't know after a series of so. breakdowns I yeah all these fallen YouTubers huh hmm pro Jared <laughs> um Spoonie who else has fallen uh well those two are my favourites but I suppose uh, there must be some that are kind of like more dare I say, mainstream YouTubers that will have fallen from grace, but I couldn't tell you who the fuck they are. I, uh... Um, Marky Players. Oh, really? What, what did he do? No, I mean, he's a big he's a big YouTuber that I know the name of. <laughs> I, I don't know anyone that's fallen from grace. All of them. There was, um... So it, uh, I think it was Dark Side Phil, which is not what I was familiar with. I was just familiar with oh, the story. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. He was the, uh, was yeah. Mm. Yeah, nothing that I ever need to see, of course, but, yeah. <laughs> Man was busted. <laughs> Everyone's got these names, like Dark Side Phil and Pro Jared. Why is no one called Bob from Accounting? <laughs> He's got a website, you know. <laughs> do, you, do you ever read the news and... Um, they will have like legitimate news and a legitimate quote from a legitimate professional, but it's like, you know, it's it's uh, like we talked to a financial expert who is also a YouTuber, and it'll be like Trader Eagle seventy two <laughs> instead of their actual name. <laughs> I People like look at that and and just think like, I, why don't I live in the woods? I don't see that, but uh, when I do see that, you know, um, they're you know, quoting um, very important information from various politicians, what have you, uh, via Twitter. I think, oh, what this this doesn't seem this doesn't seem legit at all. That can't be right. That this isn't how we do things now, right? But it is. It's you know part of the course now, and that's when it's nah. That yeah. left a very according bad taste to this in my politician's mind. direct propaganda arm. It does feel Sorry, like not you to interrupt you there. Were you I expecting had nothing more. No. <laughs> that is the end of the announcement. <laughs> Surely you weren't expecting more from me. I was just going to waffle for a bit more. But, uh, yeah. See? Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you on Twitter? I, I you'd be all over Twitter. No, not at all. I tried that shit when I was a child, and I merely embarrassed myself. <laughs> no, you didn't. What are you talking about? I don't remember every tweet you've ever put out. They were all golden. <laughs> oh, don't tell me that's what we're doing today. Uh, oh no! Uh, you might hear, you know, a gunshot very quickly. Welcome to my podcast. Looking through Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny tweet. Let me read it. You're close. Give them to me. Six. 
Well, I guess before we start, we need to talk about the big news, Damien. Have you heard about the big news? What's the big have. news? Uh, aliens. Aliens, Damien. <laughs> aliens. Have you not heard about this? No, is this a joke? Is there a slight... No. This... this is not a joke. It's just, it got reported and that was it. And, every, you know, it got, there were, uh, basically, a report came out. Reporters reported on the report. And now we're just, now it's the next day and how are we not eating each other's brain? How are we not cracking each other's heads open and feasting on the goo inside? <laughs> so, um, so what is this fucking story then? Because I heard that there were, you know, uh, uh, official secrets had lapsed on some papers pertaining to what I want to say Area 51 or something like that that had come out. But then they, nothing was, this was a while back okay. now. Okay. Uh, n n no, what it is, is for quite a while there has been a push uh, for, um, well, the Pentagon, I suppose, the Department of Defense to actually say what the fuck is going on in American aerospace because there have been like all these reports over the years and, you know, now apparently video of bizarre what they call unidentified aerial phenomenon just just stuff zipping about that they can't explain okay like you know they don't want to call them ufos even though they're the same thing you unidentified flying objects as in things that are in the sky that and we don't know what they are yeah and they've come out in this report um and said uh we still don't know what they are uh, there's nothing to suggest they're aliens um, but there's nothing to suggest they're not, I guess. But they're physical objects. We've analysed them enough to know that there are physical objects in the skies. And, yeah, that's it. That's all we've got. So they've come out and said that there's there's UFOs up there. We don't know what they are. They're not talking to us. They're just, you know, fannying about. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess we're, we're so kind of used to the... Been so comfortable with a lot of the... Well, the conspiracy uh, theories that it's like, well, it's kind of, it's old hat at this point, even when they've got, it's kind of legitimately stated um, that, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm serious. I'm not exaggerating. I, and again, they, they're not saying that they're aliens, but you kind of think, well, what are these things then? If they're not holograms or, you know, light refractions or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what are they? These objects that are moving around? Because some of the videos are pretty interesting. It's kind of yeah, they're really odd. So so yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I, we don't need to like get into conspiracy shit. But anything to say about that? Why? Why you just said? Why are people not talking more about this? That they've kind of openly said that we've found things that we just don't know what the fuck they are. Um, they are they are definitely physical things out there. I, I guess, you know, there's a hell of a lot of bullshit around the whole subject, obviously, mm -hmm. with people like Stan Romanek. I remembered his name. I was going to say Steve. Stan Romanek and um, all of that. And I do, I, you know, when people say that all of that clouds the actual weird shit, I definitely can see that. Like, uh, I, I love thinking about the implication of this. Like, okay, so there's... What, so there's alien aircraft in in the skies above us sort of coming and going as they want. And they're not talking to us, they're not they're not really interfering with us, but they're they're definitely here doing something. I I I, 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 I yeah, I, like I say, I'm kind of uh, I don't really know what to kind of say to any of that. Um there's little kind of desensitized because i said there's there's so many laughable character you know characters and stories surrounding what essentially what they're they're talking about here um yeah either neither confirming nor denying but there is definitely something and it kind of comes and goes what <laughs> it's like um it's like i don't know i think i think what this is sort of i don't know if like i've just realized this because of there are aliens perhaps or I'm not, I'm not sure if I've just become this or I'm just realising that I'm this, but I think I'm, like, totally agnostic on everything now. Like, uh, 
I don't know. Like, I, I think if aliens, like, if they reported tomorrow, yeah, some aliens have come down and they're like talking to the presidents of the world and everything. We're like, oh, right, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I hope they don't stop selling Doritos. Um, like, I, I don't know. Like, I remember when I was a kid and I'd try to think about, like, you know, is, is there life after death? Like, what happens when you die? I would think about a lot because I was mm. a very healthy child. Um, I, I couldn't get my head around sort of like death being the end. So I would always, I, would, I remember like visualizing it as sort of like, if you die, like when you die and there is an afterlife, like whatever beings in that afterlife, whether it's angels or just, you know, ghosts or whatever, it's someone going, hey, you're dead. And this is how it works. Right. Yeah, this is the tour. You know, this is you know explaining all of this, and yeah, there's some literature. You, know, so you 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 basically live forever. So I thought like that's the afterlife, and if that doesn't exist, then and instead of like being able to actually conjure the idea of nothing, I just had the idea that you you know you'd get hit by a bus, you'd be laying there and like looking up to the sky, and then you'd die, and then you'd see one of these angels or ghosts or the Grim Reaper or whatever, and and the Grim Reaper would go. Nope, there's no afterlife, and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> like I, like, like I couldn't imagine there being like no no continuation after death. I, but I could imagine being <laughs> excluded from it. <laughs> Basically, is the difference. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to imagine like nothing, nothingness. Um. As a kid, I suppose, but I guess now I've realised that that is, you know everything is nothingness. So just, yeah, uh, I was about to say. Around. <laughs> yeah. With the drudgery of my work, it's like yeah, I can imagine what I can imagine exactly what the, you know any potential afterlife would be like because it's just yeah, nothing has happened this far. I can I absolutely see say that that will continue. So are we are we like the two people at the the very back of the crowd when everyone's clamoring towards alien Jesus? Are we the two people who are like cracking a beer going, fucking and <laughs> seen it. <laughs> not even seen it, but not even seen it. It's worse than seen it. It's like I haven't seen it, but I, I've seen things like it. I, I've experienced enough to know what it is and I'm not interested. Hmm. Well, yeah, I, I could see that. You know, I was, I was walking uh, home, the, uh, I think it was two days ago now, and uh, I was walking Shepherd's Bush, and obviously um, some guy bush, was coming bush, by. Bush, 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 bush. <laughs> Get that out of your system. No income tax, no VAT. <laughs> <laughs> but they yeah. had some, I don't it know, was, some delivery I can't driver. Think a... of, I can't look at Shepherd's Bush without thinking of that. And I used to live next to Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, uh, some delivery driver uh, on a bike, um, some pedestrian running out, putting his bins or something, obviously not looked, and I didn't see exactly what happened. Um, but the guy nearly came off his bike when he brakes and what have you. Um, but they started fucking getting into it. You know, I, um, I saw them, they were like, what the fuck oh. are you doing? This, that, and the other. And then the... Uh, you know, they, they kind of got chests out, arms out, like, you, you know, who's going to fucking go for it, all this, that, and the other. Guy still got, uh, still has his helmet on, um, just fucking slaps the uh, other dude. And, uh, you know, he, he starts to get, so the the other guy, the pedestrian, gets out his keys. He's like, oh, what should I do? And this, that, and the other. Then he runs to his garden, and he has a fucking two-by-four in there. And <laughs> just starts wailing on this dude. And this is what I see. I know all this is because I was approaching it. And walking past, and well, this, at the point where I'm walking past it, that's where he's taking his, you know, he's swinging at this guy's helmet. Everyone else around me, uh, the traffic has, has to come to a halt because they're in the middle of the fucking road. Um, <laughs> everyone's there with their phones, just like, what the fuck? And it's like, yeah, sure. And I just keep walking on. And as soon as I walk past, I don't even look over my shoulder a second time. That's it, I'm done. <laughs> you turn the corner, there's like a massive explosion. You just keep walking like a helicopter blade like crushes the pedestrian crossing in front of you you just step over it yep i mean or i a... uh yeah i didn't see anything to be served by being nosy i mean it looks like a bit of a shit show um two got two yobs just having a fight um, kind of what's there to really kind of glean you know further into than that so just fuck it 
I do suspect that I could see something, you know, a horrible pileup, but I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't even break it, break, break step, you know. Yes, I, I remember once, yeah, I remember once being at Dings in Damien's hometown, London. <laughs> Uh, do you remember Dings? You used to work at Dings. It was the ho worst place in Hovelville. So anyway, anyway, where we used to live, there was a, you know, there was a small pub, which I think it was the only pub open after 1230. Is that right? Yes, it was the only one. I, I just fucking caught up. Yes, the Dings. Okay. Yeah, Dings, no, it's it. Yeah. Um, it only it's the only pub in the, at that time that had a late license to serve alcohol up until 3 a.m. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know, you, you worked there, so tell me if this is true or not, but it was like a pretty, like, normal pub up until about 11, and then it would become, like, sort of, at the very least, sloppy, occasionally nasty. Yeah, it was a total fucking trash after, you know, as soon as the other pub, because there's a couple just across the road, and, yeah, by going you know, to 11, they're kicking everyone out, they just fucking would hoard into this you know where i was working and it wasn't a big place either so you'd be you know it'd be absolutely fucking rammed and yeah uh, it, it did did attract some you know very uh, undesirable clientele shall we say and i do seem to remember you know one of my chores for the evening um this when we were wrapping up is i have to kind of check the bathroom to set the other and then kind of you know give it a spit shine um <laughs> but right. uh do you, do you ever feel like, you know, if you spit on something that's gross, do you ever feel like, uh, like it's almost like in your mouth? Like if you spat on some dog shit on the street, would you, would that make you be like, oh, uh, or is that just me? If the idea of spitting on something makes me think of what it tastes like. Oh, that's odd. No, I don't, I, I don't feel, granted, you know, it depends on how far you're spitting away. So if I'm spitting on dog shit and I'm only, well, like two or three inches away, then I, I will probably get a good nose of that and I will, I'm sure, feel it in my mouth. But yes, from a distance, yeah, exactly. oh, you know, oh. uh, no, I think I'm pretty safe, you know. Mm -hmm. And since I've had, you know, the, the misfortune of getting a bit of backsplash from that criminal fucking toilet here, uh, in my mouth, it's I, I, I don't feel that if I spat on a turd, I'd, you know, be feeling the same thing. I've, I've, I've physically suffered that, and uh, yeah, I don't. What, I don't physically think... suffered spitting on a turd? Well, no, I mean, no shit in my mouth. <laughs> well, when, when have you had shit in your mouth? I told you with the the the, uh, the flush bucket and on that debacle. Now before I uh... oh yeah okay I do remember that yeah right but that was more like shit water yeah 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 well I did... yeah <laughs> yeah I was it wasn't a, a bite out of a turd no yeah <laughs> um, but at the same time I don't feel I need to kind of go any further down that avenue that was more than enough would you, if you had to have a shit sandwich would you rather have like soft supermarket bread or like two pop tarts as the bread um. All right. If it's a fresh, warm turd pop tarts, if it's not there, if it's just regular, if it's it's been there a while, it's dry. I would go for the soft bread. Explain your reasoning. <laughs> um, I imagine well, pop tarts are typically consumed warm, um, so that yeah. must complement it ever so slightly better. But if I had a hot, wet turd in between two slices of white bread, I mean, I'm not going to enjoy it either way, but. Are you saying that you you wouldn't want to risk like having to lick your fingers off? <laughs> I don't, I'm pretty sure that's not going to be a risk. I mean, for, for why am I eating two shit sandwiches and giving an AB comparison? <laughs> I lost oh, the yeah. bet. There's no gun involved. We're only talking know? about what you do first. <laughs> At least I think with like the pop tarts, you could sort of select a flavour that you're going to give up. <laughs> they're like, well, this is the last time I can have strawberry, or, or whatever. Like, oh, I was never that into cherry, so. Okay. Yeah. You know, or something. You know, in the same way we gave up uh, Alphonse juice. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is, if you were to, ha if you had to puree shit and cut it with some juice, you'd, you you would go for that that stuff, um, because you could, you knew you could live without it after the deed was done. 
No, because I think if I if I ate some shit mixed with Alphonse juice, the Alphonse juice would make me sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to choose another one. I'd have, you know, I'd have to go. I'd I'd actually have to do something completely different. I'd have to choose like Pepsi or something. Then never drink Pepsi ever again. No, I mean I that would be fine. Do you drink <laughs> soft drinks at all, Damien? I can't imagine that. I imagine you're more of a, a Stella Artois, always at his workstation kind of man. <laughs> like, it's okay. that They're okay with it because it's just one. Like, he always has it, but it's it's just one for the day. We've agreed it. Yes, yeah, yeah. always lukewarm, always flat, but it's perfectly can you, fine. Can you drink in the kitchen? I mean, it's technically very easy, yes. Um, but, it, <laughs> but you're not meant to, right? No, not at all. Um, but, but, it but I mean, is it, it, do they ever, you know, is it, in some kitchens, is it ever just overlooked? Like, yeah, everyone's going to have a bit. No one's going to get wasted. Uh, well, during the, it depends on the people, really. Some people will quite happily do it and get on with their work and then there's nothing you know, no one gives a shit. So uh, everyone kind of gets, you know, something at the end of the shift anyway while they're cleaning down. That doesn't really count. But um, right, there, there are some people... Well, it doesn't because the work is done. There's nothing really at risk. You're only cleaning, all that kind well, of stuff. You're still on the clock. Yeah, but, but they're, they're, at a certain point, um, you're only paid up until such and such. So if you really want to oh, okay. drag out your cleaning and stay in, you know, an extra 45 minutes, you haven't made any more money. Um, oh, my God. Well, why would you ever clean then? <laughs> just don't drag it out basically um because i know it's not technique you know it's not hourly pay that it was legally um obviously obliged but um i've had uh, a lot of uh, hang on a second that's the fucking dog again are you fucking sat down this time in and fucking out all right yeah um, but I've I've worked for head chefs and they were like, like, well, why is such and such, you know, working this late and this, that and the other? And um, they don't actually. All right, I was incorrect saying they don't pay uh, pay you. They obviously will, but they try to encourage people to like not let that happen. And I was, you know, I was told to kind of steer people to finish at a certain time. And if they're not doing that, it comes to me. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? The um, way people fucking around. Um, but there's never really. In, I didn't have really any kind of issues with that, and anyone would be difficult it's not that you were given like a couple of beers and then these people are out of control no it's fine people would quite happily just it would kind of help them kind of get the job done really when they start to relax yeah um but no there are there are there are those shitheads that just are absolute fucking drunks that ruin it for the rest of us and can't function um I, yeah yeah <laughs> I, I, it was you hiding those beer cans up in the ceiling tiles. No, 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 no. Well, that wasn't me. That was never me. That was a bad idea from the start. That. Yeah, it's, but then again, you know, um, if you are getting shit faced at work, you're not probably thinking about things too logically. Um, I guess not. I, I would give that guy credit for not trying to flush them down the toilet. In all fairness. <laughs> Which he, um, he must have looked at the toilet and think, can I get away with this? You know, maybe if I crush it enough. But if I do that, it makes it, you know, the noise will give it away. So I think yeah. you just thought, uh, ah, oh, there's a ceiling tile there. That's the logic like in my head. can yeah. is smaller than two White Castle ciders, but it's more <laughs> jagged than two White Castle ciders. That sort of thing going yes. on in his head. Yeah, and it's also a rigid shape. That's, will that make the U-bend? I would say probably not. Again, another reason why open sewers are an advantage. <laughs> well, we had a septic tank. We just take turns on. <laughs> <laughs> take turns on? Or like it's a funnel. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we opened, you know, took a sledgehammer to it and we just kind of squat. You know, it's fine. I've had more problematic toilets in my time. We know this. Yeah, um, yeah I suppose so. I, at this point in time, with your broken toilets and your broken mansion, your father's broken mansion, would um, would you prefer like a sort of, or I don't know what they're called, like a, a squat to squatty toilet? You mean like a potty? <laughs> no, because I know what would happen there. A potty would basically just be a bin with a bag in it, and then once you've done, you tie the bag up and put it in the trash. <laughs> and then never no, take I, the trash out. <laughs> never take the trash out. 
<laughs> just use it for insulation. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to staple it to the walls, and then when there's enough, I'm going to put some MDF over it, paint that. That'll be the new wall. Yeah, that'll we'll have a double it, wall. You know, with enough shellac, it'll you know keep the smell in as well. Damien, this is a, <laughs> this is a cost-saving me measure. It's genius. Why, why are you not on board? It's you know it stops being shit when you varnish it in. Then it just becomes liquid insulation. It becomes a fixture. <laughs> yeah, a furnishing. It becomes eco-friendly. Um, I can't remember what I was saying. Something uh, about aliens. <laughs> no, we're talking about uh, shit sandwiches and soft drinks. Do you drink soft drinks anymore? No, you're more of a beer dude. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I really kind of, uh, I've really fucked someone off at work actually. Um, uh, for that exact reason, they, they would every now and again when they wouldn't send coffee, they would send soft drinks over to the kitchen. It's like, well, and then would always be Coke Zero and Fanta. And it's like, do you? Uh, it's like, do you want one? It's just like, no, I don't drink that stuff because I'm not seven years old. And they yeah. were, um, and I, I, I was being quite playful. I wasn't being like, no, fuck off, mate. Um, but they were well, like it was really part quite... of their identity that you insulted. Yes. Yeah. Well. Yeah. They were really put out by it, and then. I never, then that person never made eye contact with me for the rest of my career in that restaurant. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck have I done? That's not that bad. I don't know. I feel like we're missing some part of the story. Like, oh, and it, what, <laughs> like this had been delivered by the, you know, the, the ch the children's hospice next door or something. <laughs> if you could work the word projectile in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I know what you mean. You you never had a sweet tooth, but I I did when I was in my twenties and. Yeah, over the last few years, I've just, I've got to a point where I just couldn't drink a, I couldn't drink a glass of Coke. Like, wow. No. Um, I'm growing I, up. Uh, I've done that stuff uh, at a push, but if it's if it's more than just like a swig or something, it kind and of I feels put, like, like, drink it, drink it, chug, 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 <laughs> chug. If you're like a full bottle or can or what have you, I can't, maybe it's me because I'm just a highly strung bitch, but uh, I just kind of feel like unclean after a while. It's, it's really quite caustic. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to explain no, I, it, but it's just I agree. No, you can feel it, it on doesn't your teeth feel good. And, yeah, it doesn't feel good. It makes me feel a bit sick. And um, I mean, I, I guess I'd, I'd much rather have like a straight vodka. But if I've got to dilute my vodka because... I'm not getting immediately smashed. I need, I need some liquids that are you know, just going to immediately turn to vapor in my brain. I, I, I would rather have like vodka and water. Oh, okay. Than a vodka and Coke. Like, yeah, like I used to like, like I couldn't even drink rum now because it's too sweet. But if I drank a rum and Coke, that would just, oh. Yeah. Even, even stuff like bourbon is too sweet. Yeah, do you remember those, the 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 shit that we used to concoct at um, Bolo Bridge? Um, the mint, mint Jupiter, juniper, Jupiter. Jupiter, I called it mint Jupiter, and we drink liters of that fucking shit. It was just Sprite and rum, wasn't it? Something like that. <laughs> but... No, no. It was oh not right, just okay. Sprite sorry, you rum. had a recipe for this. You were very proud. Yes, you it was. Why you gave yes, it a name. I was very proud. It took us ages to find that lemonade. It was cloudy lemonade. Do you remember we? We walked up and down the soda aisle and they didn't have any fucking cloudy lemonade. It was like the one thing they didn't have. They had like purple nurple and all this shit. <laughs> but they didn't have any fucking cloudy lemonade. But we found some. And yeah, I made, basically all it was was like a fucking shitload of rum. Um, <laughs> cloudy lemonade. Uh, like 10 tablespoons of sugar. And like some raw mint just jammed in there. And <laughs> it was like in a jug. Yep. Yeah, oh, and it was man. great. It, it was, was great. Yeah, the 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 concern was never the hangover. It was more the risk to your kidneys. It's like we should be in <laughs> diabetic shock. Oh, you say that it wasn't as bad as Big Cola. I was about to say years later we clearly didn't, you know, learn our fucking lesson because Big Cola was the order of the fucking day at like three thousand percent of your R RDA a serving, whatever it was. Yeah, it was. It was literally that. I mean, if you drank the whole bottle, but that yes, yeah, yeah, would. yeah, 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 we'd we'd burn burn that shit down uh, <laughs> of an evening. And I'm pretty sure that that uh, Oso Negro stuff was not like alcohol. Um, in its truest sense i think was it alcohol is what is it methanol or ethanol it's one of the two but whatever osanegra one it was the other one that's not 
I mean, it's never healthy for you anyway, but that shit was fucking terrible. Uh, but you, you go on about have... Oso Negro, like Oso Negro was bad. Oso Negro was fine. Yeah. I used to drink that every day. I was drinking. Uh, yeah. And um, the, the one you never tried, because the, the, there's no point of me giving it to you because it was, you know, fucking awful, was Five Barrels, which was like... It was like... It was like two dollars for a, a big bottle of it, Oof. and and that I remember like I told you this. I I remember having like one shot of it one night, like I like that's all I drank was one shot of it, and I woke up with a hangover. Jesus and it was like Christ. it was like the sugar in it was was an aggravating factor. Right. Okay. Whatever that the, um there was we picked up that was it. Proper mezcal or something uh, from proper like, mezcal. Was it, from was it like a yeah. DIY shop or something like that? And it came out. <laughs> it came out. We had to bring our own bottle to have it decanted into. And they brought it out in one of those glass Lucasaid bottles you haven't seen <laughs> since the fucking nineties. <laughs> and I was like, "This is the fucking most authentic shit you can get." Yes, and, and then it's just like fucking like paint stripper. It's yeah, brilliant. it was. It was petrol, and it's like I, I can't remember. I, I I thought we, I thought I had just like one kind of serving, one shot. It's like, oh, I am already drunk. Did I don't remember thinking I could possibly drink any more of that though. Yeah, God, when I first fucking got there, the place I was at, was, you know, middle of nowhere, they they were doing um, these Italian dudes. I ended up hanging out with. They were doing <laughs> like their days were. Mezcal beer, mezcal beer, all day. Oof. It's yeah. Not good for you. No, 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 no. I, 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 I can't do it like that anymore. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I miss the days when you know being hungover just was be was just being sick, you know, for the first half of the day. But these days, it's like I just get paranoid for like fucking three days, you know. I just I, I can't do it. <laughs> you get paranoid. Yeah, I get really when I'm hungover. I what get, do you get really... paranoid about. Well, nothing in particular, but it's just it's, I just have a, you know, just my anxiety just goes through the fucking roof, you know. You sure you're not confusing that with a incredible feeling of shame? Well, that's what I thought. You know, there are definitely times when I have done something like, oh no, uh, and it kind of bleeds its way back into my uh, consciousness. Like, oh, that was definitely a mistake. But so, you know, those moments are surprisingly few and far between. No, they're just. This it's I don't know what it quite is, but I just feel absolutely just kind of out of my mind. It's it's no good. And I I ha you know I wouldn't happily just kind of like get the sickness and like you know chuck up in the morning. That's still shite, but it's a different beast now. It's like no 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 no. Yeah, I mean you know feeling. I mean obviously it's changed for me over the years, and feeling as I do, I can definitely see. I'm starting to see that in your thirties it is quite different to the impact on your life to be going out all the time drinking. Mm -hmm. Like in your twenties, I can definitely see how you can have a job that, you know, you know, and you can do things and, you know, be functional and, you know, go out like four times a week. But if I did that now, I'd just, I'd just be wrecked all the time. Yep. Um, obviously just, I, I left a, a job recently and I found uh, you know, the day before, uh, on the day, and day after, had been kind of drinking with a lot of people, and those three days have just left me in an absolute fucking state at the moment, um, and it's probably going to persist for a few more days, it's like, even though I'll, yeah, I will I continue to abstain going forward, I don't think I can fucking do that any t anytime soon, but, oh, no, I'm, I am not good right at the moment. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to go back to Amlians. Um What is the implication of, you know, there being these things up there? What does it change? Does it, is this going to lead to, you know, panic? Uh, well, I would say, Kent? Uh, when did this, uh, when did this occur? The, the report came out yesterday. Right, okay. I uh, I would say for the most part that people are going to be ignorant like me, and it's not going to make fuck all difference, really. Yeah. Um, what have you observed so far? Anyone? Do are you are you frightened? 
<laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I, I think okay, if they've come out and said this, and I think, I think it's fascinating. I suppose, like, I definitely want to know what is it? Is it, you know, is it aliens? Is it some weird natural phenomenon that we, you know, we're not even at the beginning of understanding, uh, or whatever? I mean, whatever the answer is, it's it's interesting, definitely. Hmm. Uh, I th I think if it is sort of you know alien craft and stuff, I mean. That's fascinating too. I mean, if they could confirm that, I don't know what it would change for other people. I think it would probably change society quite a bit, like over time. But uh, for me, I don't know. I'd just be like, wow. I don't yeah, think it I would mean... actually like change that much for me. But I, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> like if like if dolphins came out of the sea and started talking, what would my reaction be like? Oh, great, <laughs> banging. <laughs> I hope we can cooperate with them in the future. I mean, yeah, if you've got all these these, these things up there and let's uh, entertain for a second that they are aliens and they're not making contact, but they can confirm that that's what it is, you know, that's what these crafts are and all this kind of stuff. I think without you know, actually being on Earth, I think you'll find a lot of people, everything that would kind of would, you know, the implications there for, you know, um, kind of in terms of society and obviously various religions, what have you, without them kind of being present, I think a lot of people would just disbelieve it. Really? Yeah. And they, yeah. It, they, it, it's it, uh, in time become a new conspiracy that they've been, that, you know, the reason they've come out and told all this stuff is because they know it's bollocks, but they have to, you know, this, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it would be, but they, it would inspire a new generation of conspiracy theories. And But the conspiracy theories would be saying that it there aren't aliens. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, my first thought is that um, it would kind of... Uh, the implication that is that is there with uh, you know potential life you know outside of us would kind of shatter a lot of uh, religious dogma. I think a lot of people would refuse yeah. to kind of let go of that, and that would be you know those people would fight tooth and nail um, you know to retain what they what they have, yeah. and yeah they'd easily become you know they'd easily start wearing tinfoil hats, but just for a different reason. Yeah, I, I think I think possibly as well. And I don't know as well, the whole thing about, you know, this report is obviously from the Pentagon who, who have said that these objects are actual objects. They don't belong to us. We don't know what they are. Like, what if, what if like, Peru comes out and goes like, oh, we've been in contact with them for years. <laughs> <laughs> we told them we're the world government. <laughs> They're coming here, motherfucker. <laughs> Bow down. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Who, who, you know, if they, if we ever could make contact with them, who should meet them? I'm thinking Matthew Lillard. <laughs> I bet he would do a good job. I bet, you know, I bet, you know, he's a good representation. We don't want anybody too slick. Yeah. I don't think so. He's delightfully disheveled, and I'm probably pretty sure he's not doing too much these days. Yeah, all right. He's obviously he, he'll get the he'll get the call. He'll get the call. I'd say Jeff Goldblum, but I think there's probably some insurance. We problems. don't want to overwhelm them. No, no, no. <laughs> we, don't to, yeah. we don't want to think. We don't want them to think we're gods. <laughs> Not our best people, right away. Jesus, they won't bother coming back. <laughs> um. Oh God, I cannot remember the actor's name. Who's the guy who plays it? Uh, uh Chris, are you? It, I don't know. Are you thinking of maybe Uncle Fester, Christopher Lloyd? No. Although oh, okay. he would be fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> but as Uncle Fester as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as Uncle Fester. Like, in character. Yeah, no, I know who, who it should be. And it should be... I think he's dead now. Ooh, that means... Welcome to Is That Celebrity Dead? Forever. Is that celebrity dead? <laughs> and he's not dead. Great, so he can do it. I'm thinking, as he is now, Tim Curry. Oh, right, okay. Like, in the wheelchair and everything. I haven't been keeping up to date with Tim Curry, but he is on his last legs, isn't he? No, Damien, he's in a wheelchair. <laughs> All right, smart ass. Yeah, I remember... I saw a, a clip of him that he was talking about advertising some acting workshop, and, and this was maybe a few months back. Um, and our friend Russell, uh, who's always been 
A big Why tim- did I laugh at, at that? Sorry. Yeah, go on. Our friend, <laughs> Ro- yeah, he's our friend. Yeah, our friend Russell. Um, he loves all things Tim Curry, and every now and again he'll just send me something just pertaining to Tim Curry. And he showed me this, and it's like, you need a hug, don't you? He, and uh, naturally, he was very upset. It was kind of, it wasn't pleasant to watch, really, because he, yeah, he could, you could see that the man was slowly melting. Um, what, why, why, do, so he, so you're saying that he's, over the years, he's been sending you pictures of Tim Curry, <laughs> and you, you have a view of this, this sort of, elder, well, kind of elderly man aging further. And how it's really sad for you, but because he's a Tim Curry fan, he doesn't see that. No, no, no. I actually, I, I was kind of shocked at just how much he. Obviously, what I'd seen, I have obviously a memory of what Tim Curry has always been, and it was just kind of shocking to see, you know, how much he's aged. And it's like, oh, and uh, judging by the way he was talking, it sounded like he was obviously having kind of health issues and stuff like that. It was just. Yeah, it was clearly it was just distressing to see someone that was obviously on the way out. Um, yeah. but no, but uh, we really bummed ourselves out by watching that BlackBerry advert. With... <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> oh God Almighty, that was disgusting. With Bill Cosby, yeah, disgusting. How you mean disgusting? Sad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like well, he wasn't disgusting. Well, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't. This was long before any of the, all this, yeah. everything came out, but he was just this aged man. He clearly, he was like, uh, he had like cataracts. He looked like he'd had a stroke. Only it's, you know, it's like, two... the, you mean that like the process of aging like that is disgusting. Well, it, it's more like the process of kind of, yeah, almost it's like dying at that point. Decay. He, yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. being old is gross. This is no, this is, this is being very close to the end. It's getting old is gross. <laughs> yeah, and it yeah, just it it looks like that must be, you know, it must be fucking agony. And it's though, maybe I don't, I, I wouldn't say that, um, I wouldn't pity Bill, Bill Cosby now, but when I see Tim Curry in that state, it's like, oh, that's a, that's a shame. And I just know that, you know, my point was that, um, I mean, I saw that was distressing, but I felt like Russell might have been legitimately upset seeing that. <laughs> so why is he such a big Tim Curry fan? I don't know. It's just one of these like weird little kind of j- jokes he's just kind of into. I think because, many years ago I sent yeah. him um, sent the, uh, a clip of uh, Tim Curry in Command and Conquer, and for oh, whatever God, reason he yeah. just kind of latched onto that. I mean, it is fucking genius. I mean, I could watch it. It's only seven seconds, but oh, <laughs> it never fails to make me laugh. Um, but he just kind of latched oh, onto that. J.K. Simmons in it. <laughs> J.K. Simmons was in that as well. He's in that same game, yeah. Oh, right, okay. I haven't seen any uh, of that Oh, we stuff. know who you played as. <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> anyway, yeah, go on. Um, he just loves... He just loves... He just likes the dude. He's just fun. Yes, I've, absolutely. The, one of the few jokes I have... Uh, not jokes, sorry. One of the few stories I have about Russell, um, which I know he wouldn't mind me telling, I guess, and is interesting to tell, uh, is that... I remember when we had unfettered access to the internet at school and we were all, you know, using it sort of freely for the first time and, you know, concocting schemes with it. Um, you know, like I was trying to catfish our friend by making <laughs> Scary Mary for him to fall in love with, uh, which would, you know, inevitably result in him taking one of scary mary's tests on her profile <laughs> and leading him to like her picture of me with my fingers up at him or something <laughs> I don't know. we never worked it out but but russell's little project on the internet was he penetrated a facebook group uh, calling for the death of y bird from magic roundabout <laughs> and <laughs> he he spent his entire uh, like I get for a week or something. He spent like his entire uh, break time and lunch time on this group, uh, asking them all why they hate Wyburn, <laughs> <laughs> and like writing like why. <laughs> I totally kind of forgotten about that, but that's so typically him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, like, actually, I don't think he even typed Y, like, in capital letters. I bet it was all, like, full sentences, 
Like, oh no, I, I like I... White Bird. Why don't you like White Bird? Yeah, I imagine you know once he can had anyone access, explain to me why they don't like White Bird? He would kind Defending of approach Y-Bird. them kind of intellectually and say, like, "Please, let's have a discussion here." <laughs> I brought my notepad. These are the reasons I love White Bird. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to, but the Do calling you for is uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> So there was this show called, I think it was called The Magic Roundabout. It was it was for very, very small children. It was like for five or six-year-olds. Mm-hmm. And I guess it, it was on when we grew up at, as five or six-year-olds. And one of the characters was a, a bird, a puppet bird called Y-Bird. And the bird would always ask, why? <laughs> In a re- I guess a really obnoxious voice. I seem to remember this came to me a few years ago and I thought... Fuck, I remember the Magic Roundabout. It wasn't the Magic Roundabout. It was, some, it was called something else. Um, it definitely wasn't the Magic Roundabout. <laughs> no, but I've got Wyber like, in Mr. Front Johnny's of me now. Roundabout, I think it was called. Oh, uh, the Wyber from BBC's Play Days. Play Days. That's it, Play Days. Why, so you do know Wybird. So why <laughs> am I explaining Wybird? You know Wybird. I know Wybird now, yes. It's, I've j- re jiggered my memory. It came to me that I thought, I remember Play Days. I, I will look that up. And I watched like two seconds of White Bird going, Wah! and I shut it. And I'll never. <laughs> <watch it again. laughs> it was like memory, memories recalled. Blah. There's no nostalgia or anything for me. I, I don't know. I can't look at anything old, even if I was a kid and be like, yeah, I like it. Good memories. It's just like, oh god, no. What the I, I, fuck I, was I thinking? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm right behind you on that one. Um, I was a uh, as a kid, a huge huge Jim Carrey fan, and I was <laughs> ne- yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. I loved Ace Ventura and things like The Mask and what have you. And yeah, I you wouldn't to- shake his hand if you met him now, would you? <laughs> <laughs> I tr- I. Never want to see. I, I never want to see any of those things again because I might find myself hanging from the ceiling very quickly. Why? Why hanging from the ceiling? <laughs> oh, I would, just knowing you know what I used to you know what I used to be the things I liked. Uh, the, the cringe would be unbearable. I would have to. I'd have to top myself. Well, but what, you would feel cringy. Why? You were a kid. No, I know, but I don't let. I won't let myself off the hook. <laughs> That's not right, good enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you should. I, the only time you should feel cringe like that, I guess, is when you introduce someone at something to some someone. Like I've done this. Like, oh I've yeah. Been like I've not seen. Oh, you know what we should watch? We should watch X. I haven't seen X in four or five years, but I remember it being really good. And then you put it on, and you're sat there like, and you you're watching it for the first time in years and you realize, oh, fuck, this is shit. <laughs> this que- this makes me question my identity and feel embarrassed for recommending it. And then you end up start, sort of like trying to justify it. Like, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's a bit dated and yeah, obviously that's racist. Yeah. <laughs> that is racist there as well. Or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Mm hmm. Oh, I get behind you. Uh, I'm just trying to think of because um, we will no doubt encounter that um, ourselves. I'm just trying to think of one. I know there are a couple of things that we've rewatched that have been disappointed, uh, disappointed with. Um, yeah, yeah. It seems like the last, the one that I remember most clearly. And this is not really in keeping with your kind of story, but I remember we watched. Uh, uh, it was Malcolm in the Middle again. Oh yeah, we, that yeah that wasn't as that, good as I remember, and that uh, did not hold up. At all, but I didn't. We weren't particularly embarrassed by liking it. It was just like, oh, that's that's a shame. That was a waste of twenty minutes. Uh, it had good moments in it, I guess, but whatever. All right, so um, fan art. All right, yeah. Let's have a yeah. look. Okay, so this is from Amy Coleman, drawn on some lined paper, which I, I love, and ripped out as well. Like, I don't want that in my book. <laughs> Like, <laughs> like I, I'll, I'll keep it and take a photo of it, but I don't want it in the book. I don't want anyone to see that. This is this is um, <laughs> what I remember. No, I remember you telling me this story as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, this... well, you you tell it as you remember it. 
Well, you did, how, how we got onto the subject, I don't know, but you had some kind of existential crisis when uh, <laughs> you you, were, you woke up one morning um, and uh, you just didn't, you couldn't really, t- uh, you were in and out, you were still waking up and you couldn't tell where you were and you couldn't remember who or what you were, if that's, if I've got that right. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was like a literal, ex- I mean, I wouldn't call it a crisis because it didn't go on very long, but there were... Um, several seconds where I I got up and I uh, sat on my bed, and I don't I don't know how long it was like ten seconds like where, and I was looking around and like I I had no idea who I was I didn't know what my name was I didn't know where I was I knew what things were like I knew like okay I'm in a bedroom I'm sat on a bed you know the sunlight coming through it'll get dark eventually I knew all of that. <laughs> but I just for yeah, just like it, it was like uh, I don't know, like like the computer in my head loaded without actually, yeah, you, you know, but there was like a card loose or something. Um, um, yeah, so so this is a depiction of that, I guess. Sorry, I was listening, but I can't help myself. This is really tickling me. <laughs> What's got me? There's a lot going on there. Um, yeah. um, but what really gets me <laughs> is the. As obviously the captions at the top, the way that they've drawn your face so nonchalantly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this isn't bad at all. Yeah. <laughs> it was like that. <laughs> it was like that. Like, literally, I could have opened my door, my bedroom door, and instead of it being like the hallway, it, it was like... <laughs> the abyssal I was, void. In a, I was in a straw hut with grass. If someone had come <laughs> up to me, like, and everyone was barefoot. And like I was living in like a Polynesian state, and someone came up to me with a scythe and went, "Today we cut." I'd be like, "Okay, <laughs> yeah, I guess this is what I'm doing." I'm right. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, dear. Um... And it, it, it was it was gratifying. Yeah, honestly, it was gratifying uh, because, um, yeah, I, I it gave me like a weird sense of perspective because when I remembered, um, I remember thinking you know, when this was happening, when I didn't know, I have no memory, you know, I knew that I had no memory. It wasn't like, oh, I'm, I'm empty. It was like, oh God, who am I? I'm obviously <laughs> someone, you know, I'm going to have an identity. And I, I was thinking like, fucking hell, it could be anything. This could be really bad. Things could be really bad. You know, I, I could be in, I could be in trouble. I could be going to jail next week. And then, you know, I remembered who I was and it wasn't like that. It was like, oh, thank, thank fucking God. Oh, a micro penis isn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, I suppose if you're thinking in in those kind of terms, it might be uh, might be quite liberating. Yeah. Yeah, but 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 there was there was like fear, um, mainly not because I didn't remember, but because I could I I felt like I I could have been anyone. Um, like oh God, like it was almost like, what role am I gonna get? <laughs> Seriously, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like you know, the the idea of you know being in the womb and just before you're born, it's like you know that's when you your soul randomly leaps into that kid, and you know it's like, oh, please, please not, please not 14th century Russia or whatever. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Isn't that well, nice? Thank you, you for that, Amy. Yeah. I really like that. You've really captured it. I also like the octopus legs. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. I, I I I can't work out if I'm pouring beans or sucking them up. <laughs> Either way, like one part of you really doesn't like what you're doing. No. <laughs> I think the the sort of George on the left, I think he's thinking like at least the beans are going away. <laughs> they're too close, but they're going away. <laughs> oh, so he's backing down the street, right? Okay. Yeah, I think yeah, that's the impression I get that they're backing down. Cool. Oh. Anything, anything to say about that? No. Well, I, yeah, expertly rendered. I really like that. I know. I'll just say, my the, <laughs> the face in the sky. This isn't so bad. I will. I will carry that with me for a long time. I mean, I could. I'd quite happily have that on a fucking t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't so bad. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. You know, 
I can see that on branding for like, well, in this case, why don't we say like tins of beans or what have you, <laughs> George Beans, this isn't so bad. This isn't so bad. <laughs> uh, All right, okay. so, so the ne next couple are from Billy Barnes. Billy Barnes. What would that be? Billy Barnes, like, uh, obviously, Two Fat Ladies is 88. Right. I mean, so I was thinking that, so. 99? Billy, no, it doesn't matter. Okay, whatever. Uh, Billy no, Barnes, but... so, so yeah, he obviously made us some graphics. Yes, this is for our Blue Note record. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, that's the one we did before the nude album. <laughs> oh, I... I do, I really like, yeah, um, I do, it's really dumb, but just the outline of the legs is, is kind of genius. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It, I mean, I would, um, I think I, I should use this on the thumbnails or something. Yeah, Maybe. absolutely. That's, yeah, that's, that's really slick. And we yeah. talked about this stuff. I mean, we didn't, I know what some of the stuff uh, you've shown me that people have sent, so it's all quite silly. So I'm actually, yeah, I'm. It's, it's. I wasn't expecting to see something this uh, this stylish. I really like that. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. You're expecting to see more things drawn on, you know, lined paper. Well, I mean, I know that Amy. you know. Uh, Amy this, can't be this... bothered to get a nice piece of paper. Get up, get the back of an envelope. <laughs> Even. No, thank you. Um, yeah, no, thank you very much for that. Anything else to say about that? Would you be in red? Well, would you be would you be in red or yellow? And you know why he's done that? Oh, uh, ketchup and mustard, baby. Yeah, because we're ketchup <laughs> and mustard. Yeah, I mean, I I see, I see. You know, ketchup and mustard. That's us starting out as hip hop, sort of. You know, like like nineties hip hop. Like basically, we're salt and pepper. <laughs> and then and then we get into this sort of like um uh or like i guess sort of i mean what, what would you call it like post-ironic sort of um the shadows sort of music okay sort of like with a bit a, a bit of uh um avalanche put in there sort of do you know what i mean yeah i've got you yep that and obviously, to me, this is all before we go into our final phase, you know, the ultimate phase, which is uh, where we basically become sort of uh, visage. And for that, I think it's it's essentially exactly the same uh, San Jose jacket, but it's got a sort of like neon, uh, like dull neon sort of uh, aesthetic where it, it almost looks sort of industrially <laughs> and we've rebranded ourselves as secret pantomime. <laughs> so for the next series of the podcast, that's what we call it, right? No, I don't, I don't know. I thought, I mean, I was really talking about band ideas, Damien. Band <laughs> ideas. And I think the next podcast should just be called Trousers. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Trousers. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. I'm, I'm listening to Trousers. Yeah. That's it. That's, yeah, that's, that's Trousers. All right. Well, very nice. That sounds hosing. Yeah. Nice job. <laughs> yes. Nice job, Billy. Thank you. <laughs> it sounds really condescending. I, I mean, it shouldn't do. I mean, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> what have we got here? <laughs> 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 oh dear oh dear oh dear oh dear oh that's genius for a second though you know when it was loading and i hadn't really got a good register on what it was i just thought it was c3po with a fucking white afro <laughs> so what's I, going on here so did I. for a minute as well i thought it was c3po with like like a, a halo like <laughs> like it was like a, a sort of like religious drawing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're, we're looking at C-3PO uh, running away from the boulder in Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Who's responsible for this one then? Um, Ian Atkin. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ian. Yeah, yeah. I, I love... I, I love that. And you, you can almost hear R2-D2 sort of behind the bottle going, 
<laughs> he, that's the noise he makes when he's doing something strenuous. Yes. <laughs> very simple, but very effective. <laughs> okay. I think we've got several from this next person. <laughs> nice. It's, oh. a, it's a shot from The Simpsons that says Springfield Elementary School budget proposal, groundskeeper Damien, testing <laughs> for one crystal flesh bucket. <laughs> And one new blanket, I guess that's to put up on your walls to keep you cool, <laughs> keep you warm, rather. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it, might be, it might be too early to say, but that could be my favourite. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be cute. I'll, be, uh, I'll travel with that one for a long time. Check out the next one. It's a nightmare from Josh Smith <laughs> as well. <laughs> uh. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the final one's the best one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, that's that... superb. I love that he's just got a perfectly pouty face uh, for that one as well. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I, I was imagining Carlton. Yeah, I mean, the Dr. Octopus thing definitely works, but more like. More like his legs were really long and tall, I seem to remember, right? <laughs> yes. And there yeah, were like yeah. thousands of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, ref refresh my memory. Is it... Is he... Uh, or not? Was, did we say that um, Uncle Phil was just a massive disembodied floating head? Is that correct? Or is, or is he no, holding I, up his severed head? I don't... I, I think he's holding up his severed head. I think the, the massive floating head is from some, some, from a different conversation. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, I think, uh, I've, yeah, I'm just getting them mixed up now. It's all the same bullshit. <laughs> it sort of looks like Carlton in, in the Dr. Octopus one is controlling Uncle Phil's eyes. Yeah. Like he's Eagle Eye Action yeah. Man. Do you remember the Eagle Eye Action Man? Uh, no, go on, tell me. It was the Action Man doll, and he had like a, I didn't have it, but I, I must have seen it. Uh, he had, like, I guess sort of like a PlayStation analog stick on the back of his head that you could move left or right, so his eyes would move left or right. Right, okay. And that was a feature. Um, anyway, yeah, I mean, I, Carlton fits uh, the Pan's Labyrinth dude so well because he's sort of like, I don't know, he's got, like, an unreasonable sort of nature where you imagine it would be, like, you know, unreasonable, I guess. Like, you couldn't reason with him, you'd just have to run. Yeah, and and that would get me into like, especially with Carlton, like a, a sort of like a, a state of terrified hysteria. Yep, absolutely. I, I think it's a good pose as well. He's picked a couple of nice shots because it does look like, you know, he's just approached you from behind. It's like surprise, asshole, and he's very fucking pleased with himself. <laughs> I have an eye in my hand. Check it out. <laughs> Uh, but what about the uh, what about the your face on Groundskeeper <laughs> Willie's face? Oh, it's as you say, that's, it's nightmare fuel. That's nightmare fuel. <laughs> but I, 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 yeah, I say, I say, well done. <laughs> yeah, well done. Anything, uh, crystal flush bucket. That's uh, I, I, I love that. I absolutely, yeah, love that. Okay, this one's from Louis Phillips. <laughs> I haven't seen this until now. <laughs> oh my god. Is that okay? Oh, all right, man. All right. That's I from I might have spoken that's from Louis Phillips. Soon. Now if I didn't know any better, I would assume that this is just something someone made and put up online. But no, apparently this was sent to me. Uh, and thank you, because I'm uh, the first person to, I guess, one of the first people to see this. So thank you. That is amazing. I'm going to look at this for a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's got it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Stage three, he is now peanut. <laughs> Obviously, fucking painful. <laughs> and what if they've, whatever's um, been mocked up at the bottom as well? Whatever that fucking thing is, it's just fa it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. There are many questions. I mean, is this something that he's found online, or did he actually mock the thing up to himself? Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I mean, questions. I guess I could do a reverse image search. Should I do that? No, don't spoil the mystery. It's it's much better like this. No, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Ah. Ah. Uh. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Google cannot find this image. <laughs> <laughs> on that peanut this is horrific <laughs> it's it's e equal parts goofy but nightmare at the same time <laughs> oh, jesus that's got to be the best one i mean that was amazing yeah that that's that that's pretty good <laughs> Your face on him. <laughs> Rick Stein to be executed for treason. Boo! <laughs> that that is what it was like. <laughs> oh, this is oh. oh oh. If you if you look as well, there's like a. I mean, I want to say it's an ice pack, but it could easily be a diaper. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, whatever the context was for this, I have no idea what it was. <laughs> oh, the, the next one is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Louis, you absolute fucking legend. That yeah. is so funny. Is this all from the same guy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. bravo, sir. You're a chef, Damien. <laughs> oh. Oh. You see, I don't even remember that. No, nope, like, neither do I. I. Like when I actually looked at the thumbnail a second before opening it, I thought that someone was. I thought someone was making the point to me that they look alike, and I was going to say, yes, they look alike. <laughs> I, don't remember, I don't remember discussing them looking alike at all. I think, he, I think as well, Paul O'Grady looks a lot like Glenn Close. Yeah, in, I can see that. Yeah. Um, yes, as discussed on Santos <laughs> by top scientists. <laughs> And then oh. uh, a good old Sutty one. Nice one. <laughs> Sutty, I mean, everyone was always at the behest of Sutty, I seem to remember. He didn't really need the gun. <laughs> yeah, he, he can fuck right off, I think. Uh, this one's from Max. He said, said to be right at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> trouser, trouser Paul, nice one. <laughs> Support your local pants, please. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Could, I mean, I guess we've not even discussed the sort of Sans Hosen law. Not law, law. Law. Is there law? I thought it was something that was just said off the cuff. What do you remember? Tell me. No, I mean like, I mean like judicial law. <laughs> like in this society of no pants like i mean can can you wear like can you wear pants like for i mean like i i, I like swat teams going into into buildings like in full body armor but nothing on their pants <laughs> nothing on their legs just like like bare legs 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So, all right. Well, I mean, look at the yeah. insignia on on the uh, uh, on the cap there. It does seem to. It's it's not just. I mean, presumably, when you say when we clarify what we mean by pants, uh, we mean trousers, or do we mean under underwear as well? Because whoever. You know, Max has decided that um, hot pants uh, or short shorts are definitely out of the equation as well. Well, I mean, I, I thought about that as well. And I, I think that the whole idea of um, hosen sort of harks back to, uh, you know, a, a sort of more classical era. You know, when we're when we're, we're we're sort of evoking, you know, political imagery with with our name. It's it's really, you know, more of the, the sort of, you know, central ideas of things rather than. You know the the semantics. So to me, it, it goes back to a time before underpants. So it's really neither here nor there. If you don't have trousers on, you don't have underpants on, probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you said that was this. Uh, you said it was Max, right? Was this was it yeah. Max uh, Corval? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. He, he, he's always done good. Uh, he always did good stuff. I say, uh, yeah. Lot. Thank you, Max. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks to every, well, everything that's been sent in. Been... Well, you say oh. that we haven't got got through them all yet. I don't know. I, um, crystal flush bucket and that Fraser peanut thing. I'm, I'm happy for the. Yeah, I'll be happy for a while. I didn't think the Daily Bumfuck would ever let someone give no stars, but there we have it. <laughs> My life covered in shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the detailing there is superb. I <laughs> I love the Ritz and salad cream. <laughs> yep. Ah, oh, dear. Um, I suppose now that you, you know you're you're over sweet things, you're more of a mayo and crackers sort of guy. Um, no, no, I haven't plumbed those depths just yet, but it's still on the table. It's still on the table. You don't know, yeah. Where when I'll you say plumb and... those depths, do you mean literally like you'll have to get the barbecue tongs to put in the the Ritz crackers because there's only like an inch of mayonnaise left? Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, I actually can't consider the logistics. It's, it's, I might not. Yeah, it it does feel like I might be going into this, you know, um, without the uh, proper without you without. Uh, without the proper due diligence, uh, I might have to abstain for a little while longer. Do you think as well, like that's how they, you know, measure sort of the national stockpile of mayonnaise? <laughs> what by the length of tongs that you use? No, by you know, in the you know, by like the same thing in um, Waterworld with the guy who lives in the bottom of the ship with the oil. Do you think it's right. like, you know, it, mayonnaise futures have gone up because there's only about seven inches of mayonnaise left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, across, across all warehouses in the United States. I imagine they're all connected so that they all have exactly the same, you know, <laughs> levels. It's all the yeah. same system, so it's all the same levels. So, it's, yeah, mayonnaise has never been this low since 1952. <laughs> reckon it's like that? Because they, they, they transport it all in those trucks, those... Yeah, there must be some spoilage. You wouldn't think they did, but they do. They transport all those all those things in those, um, you know, fluid trucks. Yeah. So yeah, as well, Peter Hughes also got the um, the Space Invaders right. I was about to say, I'm looking at them now, and I thought like, I, I could fucking slaughter a bag of Space Raiders. <laughs> did, did they come in different flavors, or were they all just crunch? I'm not totally sure, actually. I might be confusing them with another one that was, was like, was it like Transformers or something like that? Oh, yes. Transformers, yeah. Yeah. I want to say the Space Raiders were pickled onion and then maybe Transformers mm -hmm. like beef or something. Oh, so it was a different shape as well. How novel. <laughs> <laughs> another, another blinder from Peter Hughes there. Yeah. Canal. Yeah. Wearing maternity Especially wear, Especially with I think. flaccid party whistles. <laughs> I'll, I'll put in a slide whistle here. Okay, we've got another, another one from Peter Hughes going through all the alphabet now. <laughs> yeah, right. I, this, this made me struggle to remember like what I've been talking about, obviously. And um, something to do with... <laughs> Uh, they kill Fraser and Niles kill their dad, and then Fraser eats his dad, and then Niles eats Fraser. Yes, is that right? 
Yeah. I don't. I, I don't. I but, can't remember in which Niles order. Is Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna have to zoom in on that one. <laughs> I don't think you are. <laughs> is that a moustache or is his mouth open? I I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's what i wanted to see <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah i don't know i don't know i i see larry david as more of a sort of you know i don't see him as a v-neck guy right okay but i do like the, that he's got a utility spanner with him <laughs> he's prepared for one job <laughs> also also is that john goodman or is that jeff green that's definitely he, jeff 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 Green, yeah. Well, I guess that makes sense. He's made it But for a second, you know, if you kind of squint a little bit, it could be Pendulette. <laughs> <laughs> what other fat people could it be? <laughs> I thought, when I saw the thumbnail, I saw the hat, I thought it was Cartman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the hat, but I, I imagine as well that, you know, I am, I've always imagined it as sort of the head won't actually be able to take that much off the ground. Like, it can't really fly. It can fly <laughs> over puddles and stuff. And water. Bodies of water. Right, okay. But it can't fly up cliffs. Or, you know. I don't suppose I gave it that much thought. I imagined the head would be the same, same almost equivocal height to Larry David. I mean, that huge fucking head. No, I think it is huge. I think it's just, you know, Far I see away. it as being like 20 feet behind Larry David. Right, okay. Like, coming and up he's behind pointing him. to him. It's like, yeah. <laughs> um... And, yeah, I mean, I guess we missed the whole thing as well about, like, if he's that big, then, you know, presumably there could be occasions where Larry David gets into John Goodman's head. Oh, yes, yeah, he could be ferried around in the mouth, naturally. In the mouth, How like do we miss pelican. that? Oh, yeah, ooh. He can really distend his jaw. <laughs> and obviously we've got, you know, sausage coming from you-know-who. Absolutely, yeah. No, I wanted to mention. I do like that. The way I'm seeing it is that it's cutting that building in two. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, we're almost done. This per this person um, deleted their Facebook account before I could get this. Could get could get their their name. I guess it was just on there. <laughs> I, l I love that they've put my name in the corner. That's really yes. funny. <laughs> it does look like the lava lamp's on the other side of the table and you've been staring it down for like an hour. <laughs> I think they need to put an arrow to to me so I know which one is me. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, unknown. Okay, and this is the last person. Uru Kanza. All right, you ready for this? Yep. All right, there's two. So this is the first one. Oh, that is superb. Wow. <laughs> yeah, nice. Very nice. Very, very generous on the hair. <laughs> it's yeah, it's expertly done. That's a that's, yeah. yeah, it's a real fucking nice job. Yes, you did a very good job of that. Um brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Obviously we uh, you know, I'm going to send you the second one, but we'll get back to this, but the second one I want you to see now. Okay. <laughs> that is brilliant yeah that's superb <laughs> yeah I, I guess that's the uh the same image that you see in the the picture frame yes uh, in the yeah. first one that's amazing that's got yeah. to be like your um uh well i don't know I was going to say, it's got to be like your profile picture, but it's almost, I don't know, it's almost too good for that, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want people thinking I'm taking credit for that one. <laughs> that's really good. No, it is, yeah. It's so it's, funny. It's, uh, yeah, that's absolutely fucking slamming. Yeah, and can you identify all the blobs? Uh, so I, I see Fraser at the top there. Yeah. I see Ramsey. Yeah. Uh, I think that's Dan Aykroyd in the bottom. The one Definitely in the middle, is. I'm yeah. struggling to identify just yet. Spacey. Uh, <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God, imagine being a blob stuck in there with them. Jesus fucking Christ. That'd be a nightmare, wouldn't it? Yep. 
But yeah, well, well superb rendering. But yeah, that's um, I, 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 I yeah, don't, I'm not sure what to say really. It's um, kind of the quality is superb. I'm kind of I'm floored by that. Excellent. Yep. Okay. So I've got one last thing, uh, which I'm sending you now. It is a song. Okay. <laughs> Beats on feet by Scrotum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll listen to it together. So tell me when you want to press play. Um, well, I've got it queued up, so. Um... All right, let's press play. Okay. Privileged that my words seem to have this much impact. <laughs> I like the actual scrotum on this webpage as well. Yeah, I'm just looking. It's like it's each time I look back, there's more dick on screen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that, was it the wallpaper? What is that? Someone stick their nads through, what is that, a slice of bread? Oh, I see lettuce and, uh, is that mustard? <laughs> I thought it was a door knocker. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really starts to get into it in the second minute. Yeah. <laughs> well there yeah there you go that was beans on feet by scrotum <laughs> all right well i mean of all the things we, we've been sent this is the first time i'm actually worried about the uh the people that have submitted something this is the first time yeah well the, the this is like... the first time Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they've shown this time around. There's some. Yeah, some people have made some real efforts. Some very talented chaps. But that, these guys are fucking lunatics. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was fun. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not saying that. Don't get me wrong. But <laughs> it's mental. <laughs> yeah, but you know. Yeah, it was. But it's a song. Uh, you know, I want the Beans Manifesto. If we're going to talk mental. Okay. I mean, I don't want that. Please don't do that. <laughs> and please send it to your congressman before you send it to me. That would be the best fan art ever. If someone did, did the Beans Manifesto and sent it to their, you know, local representative or whatever in their country. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going through the track list on this album. <laughs> track number four, Pop Blast 1. <laughs> Yeah, we have the original butt, butt, butt blast. <laughs> you have butt blast two and three. <laughs> Glad they made an appearance. <laughs> yep. So, yep. That's all the fan art. That was really good. Yeah, that was superb. I was just uh, I'm actually really wiped out after that. <laughs> Do you have anything else? Any other stories or anything? Um. Well, it's not. Um. I'd like to kind of name check that guy Simon again because the, the the guy that sent me that work that my dad ultimately threw out. Um, he did in the end send another piece through of you know, um, and I don't actually have it with me. Otherwise, I'd send you a photo of it. And it's okay. Uh, but he's done um, basically a mock of a poster for a Hieronymus Swash, and it's fucking excellent. Um, when I get back tomorrow, I'll uh, 
I'll yeah, I'll get up. I'll show you what it is. Um, it's superb. Okay. okay, so I'll I'll put it on screen now, but I can't comment on it now, obviously. Yeah, but uh, yeah, um, it's uh, uh, he was still he's, he was incredibly gracious to do it all over again. He um, even after I uh, you know you obviously found out what happened, I made my apology in private as well, and he's like you know he was kind of happy to do it all over, all over again. So yeah, the work was superb. He's obviously a thoroughly delightful chap. I just thought it was worth bringing up. Um, Great. Yeah. Thanks very much for that, Simon. And apologies again. <laughs> um, did father. you hear about the... Uh, uh, what was it? I guess it was called... A, they they called it a... I think a redneck rodeo. Like a, a spontaneous sort of redneck rave. Redneck rave. Right, okay. I'm just typing that in because... Yeah. Yeah, there was a redneck rave here... I just typed it in to check that that's what they were calling it. Yes. Uh, and the top story is, Man impaled at Redneck Rave. Going oh to be okay. <laughs> Does it elaborate with what apparatus he was impaled? Um, I think it was a, a log. Oh, God. <laughs> I was going to say like a flagpole to be silly, but a log? <laughs> yeah, he was, he was in his car, I think, and he drove over a log too, qu well, too quickly or at all. <laughs> Redneck rave at Kentucky Park ends with 48 people charged, throat slashing, and an impalement. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't think a redneck rave kind of elaborates what kind of happens at these things. Because it sounds fucking bloodthirsty. Um, I mean, I'm just reading it now, which I'm sure that's interesting for everyone. Uh, so, yeah, apparently um, it was organised, I guess, just to be a... A festival, um, exactly, right. but but I guess it's kind of like that, um, but specifically for rednecks. Okay, that's how you know that's what they called it, I guess. But the Unless everyone so, yeah. everyone who went there were like dapper New York gentlemen, being ironic. <laughs> and there like, lies all, all the throat their, slashing. All, yeah, all their like check shirts and stuff were like four hundred dollar Tommy Hilfiger. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, I just I I brought it up because obviously I saw this and I thought like. Uh, what would it take to get you to go to something like that? Well, uh, are you trying to engineer the situation? I would say after the no. fucking throat slashing, uh, the wild horses wouldn't be able to drag me to, to shit like that. Oh, it's the throat slashing that puts you off. Well, impalement too, you know. It's, I'm not exactly going to blend, am I? I? I'm sure I'll be there with the target on my back, so like, fuck that. Why? Why would you be there with the target on your back? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you're going to go in your Hillary Clinton t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's just her face smiling. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I will say that apparently um, the police decided that they it was too big to, to sort of go in and break shit up. So they just started checking cars as they came in. And the first car they checked had loads of meth in it. Oh, God. <laughs> so it was probably kind of it was probably fun. OK. Um, I mean, I don't know. You've you've been to you've been to festivals. What's wrong with this one? <laughs> All right, maybe I, I I take a further look into this story at, at the very least. But I I can tell you that no, thank you very much. So next year we're going to Redneck Rave. Yeah, all right. But bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> you've got a. You You're can't, calling me chicken. I can't. I can't back down now. You can't shave until then. Okay. How, yeah, yes, so you could get like an Amish beard going. You can right. shave your mustache, but do I have to? Do I have the option? Yeah, you can not go. <laughs> oh, I thought, yeah, I thought you'd, uh, you'd you'd dared me. Now I've got to do it. I don't know. It doesn't seem that like that much of a dare. Like what? I, You're it, making it seem as though I would be going solo. And maybe that's why. <laughs> like, no fucking right. No, it, you have it to be there be, for but the four, I, five I'd be, days. I'd be with a documentary film crew filming you. You'd, you'd be <laughs> on your own, like you know, the way you interact with people, but. Yeah, You're I very mean, much like, in a bubble. <laughs> we're, we're there all the time. The uh, uh, concrete policy of non-interference. <laughs> yes. Like, please, for the love of God, someone help. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, though. I don't know why you'd think that there would be, be worse than some of the places you've been to. I don't know. I suppose people weren't getting their throat slashed at... Download. Oh, yes. Yeah. The download. Have you ever... Have you never been in... Uh, 
You never been in a bar where something like this happened? I don't think I even finished my story earlier about the dings, did I? We just started talking about the dings and then. Oh yes, to yeah, yeah, else. yeah. There's, yeah, there's, there's, I, I think I know where you were going. Yeah, there was a. What well, I'd have to. One of the things I'd have to do is I'd have to clean the uh, uh, the the gents at the end of the evening, and um, some fucking yobs got into it um, with their dicks out apparently. Um, and just like bust each other's face open on on the urinals, and I was I was I was told that I couldn't uh, fulfil my uh, toilet cleaning duties that evening because the uh, the toilets themselves were an active crime scene. <laughs> you can't I couldn't touch anything. Was that difficult to get through? Uh, what like you mean? The I mean, story it must, right have, now? must have been good for you, right? Like, oh, I don't have to clean it now. Yeah, kind of. I didn't see and anything. Then, and then, do the cl- do, after the police, you know, do whatever, I guess nothing, maybe take the blood. Do they, they don't clean it up, do they? they just leave no, it no, no, you. it would have been on us, but I mean, I was, what, 18? They would, they just let me go, go home, it's like, fuck it, we're going to have to be here for how, however long the police are here. Could have been hours, who knows? They weren't going to keep me, so that wasn't really my problem. So did, th- did that happen then with no one knowing? Like, did these two people fight in the bathroom and then leave on their own? No, I, d- I didn't see who was apprehended because I, I was just I was back and forth, you know, glass collecting. The place was kind of packed. I just know that, you know, they were shooing people to the other end of the pub. And that's when I'm like, oh, OK, what's going on? And I got I saw, yeah, I, I, I spoke to my, for lack of a better word, manager. And uh, they told me, yeah, that this had happened. I'm, I'm sure if I'd have gone around the front where the, uh, you know, the vans and shit were, I could have seen these you know, two wankers being, you know, held to rights, uh, you know, in, in cuffs and what have you, but I, I didn't see any of that shit. They didn't, definitely yeah. didn't get away with it. I mean, what a, no. if there, there were, you know, it was, it was bloody, you know, there's, they, you weren't walking away from that. No fucking way. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, well, I was in there and um, with Skinner and something happened outside and like everyone in the pub got up and ran outside like shouting and there was like oh, yeah? a massive fight, fight outside yeah and then it was literally like literally just me skinner and then like the the woman behind the bar just in the bar like what the fuck happened <laughs> there was like a massive fight outside and they just locked they just locked the doors and that was it yeah, well, Drumford was kind of like that. I remember, you know, when we were um, goss for the few times, um, there was a competing school. Apparently, I don't know, there was some kind of what? Uh, well, not a competing school, but uh, the, it was, it was the Jordan Thorpe. Any kids came from Jordan Thorpe, that everyone in fucking uh, would just like jump on them. And there was like one time, yes, yeah, kind of competing similar. in the same way that. Well, community is not the right word, but it's like a, some kind of, I don't know, local rivalry. John Field was middle class, and Jordan Thorpe, Thorpe was very working class. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I remember a couple of times, you know, uh, just being in the playground at lunch, you know, and then suddenly the place, much like the sidings, you know, would just kind of just suddenly be empty. I remember, you know, you had the bank at the end of the, uh, with the sort of the start of the uh feel and what have you and uh, you look over and just like hundreds of kids were running down there because like three kids uh, from that uh the area had showed up and it's like no we have to all fucking fight you and they just flocked on the well yeah like almost nothing it's like what the fuck is going on yeah but yeah apparently that's a that's just a drone field thing you're just gonna go in uh join in just fucking shout <laughs> i don't think it's just drone field but no yeah. not at all but i mean i that's yeah I saw it there. I saw it there, yeah, I know. It's, yeah, it's probably fairly representative. <laughs> um, it was a redneck rave. <laughs> Those kids never went back. They were impaled. What do you think, what sort of music did you think they were listening to? The Shaman? You think there were loads of rednecks there going, he's a good, he's a good. <laughs> No, I just think I think it's the gallery theme from Vision On, just on a loop for five days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what what sort of alliterating rave would you want to go to? Ritz Cracker Rave. <laughs> I'm having a Ritz Cracker Rave tonight. I'm putting, putting the TV on standby. I'm going to turn all the lights off off and on. So, by the way, have we settled on Matthew Lillard before we end up before we go? Matthew Lillard to meet them? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to entice them back with the promise of meeting Jeff Goldblum eventually. 
Like, who do you think the most inappropriate person to meet them would be? Probably Donald Trump. <laughs> um, uh, maybe Alex Jones. <laughs> or like, uh, I don't know, like what, what about like Osama bin Laden or something? Like, like someone like super religious. Okay. You know, uh, they're they're, gonna, they're not going to be a good representative of society. I don't think they're going to have all these no. questions. You know, whereas we don't we don't want questions. We just want you know trade deal. Go. <laughs> Sign this. Commerce. We'll be saying. Begin the trade. You know, this whole time I've still got that Bandcamp page open, and I have I've it inadvertently realised I've been staring at that scrotum this whole time. <laughs> well, that's funny because I. Uh, closed that when we stopped talking about it and removed my message to you so that I'd, I'd have to look at actual beans on feet. <laughs> well, to to their credit, they put, you know, some latex glove on it, so it's not, you know, on You put, put some latex glove on the fucking picture. <laughs> that exists really upsetting? <laughs> it's just gross, I guess. It's like... Uh, it's like adverts where babies are eating like baby food and like getting it everywhere and like opening their mouths while they eat. Like, I don't need to see that. Like, yeah, I'm not saying enough. like, oh my God, it shouldn't exist, but I don't need to see it. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I guess we're done. Yeah, okay. Huzzah. All right, well, thanks to everyone who, uh, you know, sent all their stuff in. It was really good. Yeah. No, and uh, really... slightly, slightly peculi peculiar, which I also enjoyed. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, really big thank you because that was absolutely, yeah, I loved that. It was hilarious. Some really great stuff there. Yep. Well, we'll be doing another one of these and sometime in the future. So if you want to send some, you know, uh, Facebook or Twitter or whatever, I guess. <laughs> Facebook, probably. Yeah, Facebook. I have a page on Facebook. You really hate saying that, don't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, well, bye-bye now. <laughs> yes, yeah, All right. bye. Don't open it with your balls! Ah. Don't you get me another... Do not open it! Don't open it with your balls! Ah, no, no, no.